call the meeting to order at 6.01. Um, and the first order of business is to, um, if there are any amendments to the agenda, which... Uh, I'd like to add the uh, CIP. Should it go under discussion items? Discussion. Okay, so we're adding the CIP to discussion items. Um, are there any other amendments to the agenda? Okay. I think we want to move the kids to the... Oh, we're going to move the, the Lakeview students who are presenting are going to be the first thing under number four. For the f they're going to go right after public comment. That's the best way to put it. Um, so, um, does every... Yeah, okay, and then... Are, I don't have to vote on that, do I? No. Okay, great. Um, is there a motion to approve the minutes of December 4th? So moved. Um, if I read them correctly, it said we were in Hazen, unless I was reading the wrong ones. No, I, I didn't. I forgot to change okay. that. I okay. also left some people out, too. I realized looking around tonight, I didn't have just the oh. present. Okay. I just noticed that it was Hazen. And there could be other people yep. there, too, that I forgot. Um, Emmett was there. I feel like I feel like that's correct. Was there another principal there that I missed? Uh, Craig was. Uh, no, because you've got. Well, so. Patrick Pennick, but Justine Guthrie and Craig Wilson, I guess, would also go up in the same line with administrators because they're the principals of the other two okay. schools. I just had a question. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a very member asked about the sports program, and it looked like there was an action statement that was happening, like draft a statement around the sports program. Right. Is there a timeline for that? Is that what Who's doing that? Did, did that all work out? No. Nope. That's as far as we got. No, that, that we yeah. want a statement. Because it, the way that uh, I feel like, and somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, at that meeting we sort of talked about, the principals talked about the fact that they're staying in contact about what the sports programs are looking like at their individual schools, and so. If there aren't enough kids in one school, they're calling another school and like kind of just keeping the lines of communication open about that. Is that that's pretty correct? So, I think we were feeling in light of the <coughs> upcoming budget that drafting. I, I guess I got the impression that drafting a statement. The statement would be more about like the feel of the sports programs. I think as opposed to like a specific. Here's how the sports programs are going to run because. Uh, I feel like the principals were feeling like they were handling it pretty well, so there were sports programs in all three schools and that kind of thing. But it's it is kind of like on the back burner so right now. There's no movement about like doing any sort of thing. Not at this point, no, because there's been enough kids to fill the to have there be sports programs in at all the three campuses. So. Are there any other questions about, or discussion about the minutes for the fourth? Okay, is there a motion to, okay, well actually Kim made a motion to approve them. Is there a second? A second with the changes. Okay. Uh, so, um, all those in favor of approving the minutes for December 4th with changes as noted, please state by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Uh, Motion carried. <coughs> All right. Um, next, uh, is there any public comment? About anything. Hmm? Come on, Nancy, you got something to say? <laughs> <laughs> no? Okay. Okay. So there's no public comment. So um, now we are inviting the Lakeview students to present. I'll just take a quick minute to introduce. Yeah, sure. Okay. sure. This is Miss Campos. She's our fifth and sixth grade teacher at Lakeview. And then we have Thea and Finn. 
They are sixth graders. Yeah, great. Okay. Um, so I, I guess we're just sort of um, talking about a research project that our class did. And um, at Lakeview, we have something called Laker Time, which is every day um, after lunch for about 35 minutes, where we have different groups, multi age groups that come to our rooms and, and work on honing reading skills. And so with the group I had this fall, I wanted to do something around research and especially nonfiction text, informational text. So um, I found, I really like these books. They're Who Was books. So this is King Tut. And because Egypt is sort of a high interest um, topic, we went with this, so students had to read, and after they read and researched, they got some perspective on the actual time period, um, timelining and understanding Common Era and before Common Era. And then um, they had to organize uh, research through books and internet and organize their notes and do a lot of sequential writing, which is it's a big thing for me to help kids. I noticed that writing and keeping organized writing sort of takes a lot of uh, skill and, and practice. So we did that and then they took their work and they put it on a slideshow um, to present it to others and the sort of reward at the end was to get to make an artifact, which is what you see here. And it's pretty self-explanatory. You can see between pyramids and crocodiles and pharaohs. And this is a Finn's papyrus painting and Egyptian houses. These are some of the projects um, they did. And what we did on the last day is we had a, a really fun celebration of learning where students made some Egyptian foods and they um, showed their presentations to each other and did some taste testing and got to see each other's projects. So it's kind of a, a way I love to teach project-based learning. Um, and that's pretty much it. So, and by the way, thank you all for what you do and for being here and listening and allowing us to show off these wonderful students. Um, so if there's any questions about that, part of it, feel free to ask, but I think you guys all get the idea, and I will let Thea just show you um, what, the, what, you know, an example of what a presentation would look like. So Thea's going to come, and we will put this in present mode. Uh-oh. Um, so I studied ancient Egyptian food, and I made a slideshow. Ancient Egyptian food. Intro. Today I'll be teaching about what ancient Egyptians used to eat and what ingredients they used. Little snacky foods. Most Egyptians like to eat garlic, figs, dates, beans, cheese, fish, bread, and butter, and even more. Breakfast. For breakfast, the Egyptians ate a meal called fuel metamis. This meal contains of fava beans with parsley on top, vegetables, and occasionally hard-boiled eggs on the side. They would sprinkle spices on top. Lunch. For lunch, the Egyptians us usually have something called a shwanma, which is, which is shaved meat in bread, or something called a falafel, which is fried chickpeas in bread. <coughs> Dinner. For dinner, the ancient Egyptians used to have something like pasta with beans and vegetables, or meat with vegetables. They often ate fish from the Nile River. Drinks. For a beverage, the Egyptians liked to drink stuff, stuff like, tea. Like, like tea, coffee, milk, salad, sugar cane juice, watermelon juice, and barley beer. Water was not always clean to drink. Today, many people in Egypt sell food off the street. The two most popular foods sold on the street of Egypt are something called a falafel and something called a fried feta ball. It is fried feta cheese with pita bread on the side. I have 
not made these dishes to <laughs> So feel free to think of them. <laughs> But she did make them on our day of celebration, and I will say they were quite delicious. They were a hit with everybody. Thank you for watching my slideshow, and I hope you learned something. Fact. Fun fact. Most of their crops were grown by the Nile River. The Nile banks were very fertile, and Egyptians learned to irrigate their fields. Great. Right. And I made this plate because wow. ginger was a very common thing to season food with. Right. Yeah. Any questions or? Okay. Nice job. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So Finn, as you can see, did art and. Um, she also, well, she'll show you her project, but take it away, Finn. Ancient Egyptian art. Intro. In this presentation, you will learn about ancient Egyptian art and about how they made the materials, what types of art, the history of art, and more. I find it very interesting and fun to make, and I hope you do, too. Art history. Egyptian art was, the first, was first developed for the king to show he was a god. After, regular, Egyptians cra regular Egyptian craftsmen followed the royalty's fashion of art carefully. Then everyone could enjoy the art. Making materials. Ancient Egyptians had brushes to write with or paint with. They made their brushes out of a reed and chewed on the end until, until the end split. That was a brush. They made ink by taking charcoal and carving it into a block then they mixed it they mixed it with water and then they had ink. To make color they would ground up different minerals or plants. Papyrus paper. Egyptians did not have regular paper regular paper from bark like we do now. They made their paper from the leaves of, of papyrus trees. To make paper, they take the leaf and cut the stem of the plant into long strips. The strips were placed in two layers, crisscross then pounded with a rock or a hammer. When all the liquid is pounded out, the two layers make one sheet. The sheet was put under a large rock until it dried out and became flatter. Then they rubbed the sheet with a smooth stone until the sheet was smooth. Sculptures and pottery. Egyptians were one of the first in the world to make pottery. They used it to reflect their imagination and creativity. Since they lived next to the Nile, they had lots of access to clay. Egyptians would carve animals and their daily events into the clay. Egyptian glass. Around 3500 BC, Egyptians started to make and use glass in their art and culture. Egyptians were among the first to do this. They would make little glass creatures and figures in glass beads. Egyptian painting. Oops, sorry. Hit it by mistake. Archaeologists first found paintings inside tombs. They were there because they were supposed to represent the dead person's life and have things they would need in the afterlife included. The Egyptians would paint on the walls, stone, and papyrus paper. Fun facts. Each color had a meaning. Yellow was immortality, red was chaos, blue was re rebirth and creation, green was joy and fertility, and white was power and simplicity. Egyptians used moldy, moldy bread to help with infections. Queen Cleopatra was not Egyptian. Egyptian slaves had labor strikes. Many Egyptians kept pets. <laughs> Great. Conclusion. To conclude, in ancient Egypt, art was a big thing. There were painters, potters, glassblowers, and lots more they didn't inclu include. They made all of their materials out of things they found around their village in the Nile. I hope you liked this presentation and learned something new. And of course... this painting on a piece of papyrus paper that Miss Campos had and it's a snake with wings. I don't really know. It's over a garden so I guess it protects the garden. I don't know. <laughs> Is your name on that? Yeah, it's in hieroglyphs. <laughs> wow. Nice job. Nice. Nice. And that is that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Any questions?
Okay, so we're going on to the principal's incidental report. Um, does anyone have questions? Do the principals want to say anything about what? I think one of the exciting pieces on here was the, um, when all the sixth graders and some of the fifth graders got together for the um, outdoor education morning. Um, with, uh, that was, it was great to see them all out there educating each other. And together, it just kind of you know, reinforces the, the opportunities that we're looking for to kind of bring this together. And something that's not in here because we had one with vacation was we have custodians collaborate uh, yes. uh, helping here at Lakeview, right? Yeah, so, so yeah. Um, wander into the gym I before heard you, that before it was you pretty leave pretty today because it looks amazing. I I heard, yeah. Um, and we borrowed some from some staff from Hazen and Hardwood. I think Hardwick as well. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. So. Oh, that's awesome. So we're new at this, but as we move forward, we just hope this will accelerate and we'll have more opportunities can you tell me more just from my perspective I'm looking at your um, the MTSS piece and I see that you're working uh, a plan for a unified PK system PK to 12 system of supports and um, I happen to be a PK teacher so I'm just curious how you're gonna do I, you guys probably haven't even thought about how you're gonna tie that piece in well I know at, at Hardwick, of course, the PK right, is at the school. Yep. So Jessica Lamberton Brown, our PK teacher, is, is involved uh, in terms of what, what literacy pieces is she doing <coughs> in the classroom? Mm -hmm. How does that connect with kindergarten? Yep. So a lot of that is around the, you know, the universal instruction <coughs> would be with pre K. Yep. Um, but it, it's part of this opportunity when we're meeting together, working with the Williamstown district. Uh, David Perra goes with us as well from Hazen, mm -hmm. Hazen principal. So it's just exciting to have all the sending schools as well as the Hazen principal all at the same table talking about how we really can make this pre-K all the way through the mm -hmm. grade. It is in the infancy, though, in terms yes. of how that looks. But, I'm just curious to but see But to be how successful, I think it has to be PK through it, yeah. I agree wholeheartedly. Yeah. So I'm interested to see how that Absolutely. works. <laughs> and that was one message we got from Williamstown as well, is that it needs to be a full system piece, not just elementary is doing one and pre-K is doing yep. something else. And that would also encompass social emotional learning yeah, and exactly. academic learning yeah. too. That's my yes. Yes. Thing, the social emotional piece. So I'm glad to see it. How good is the guidance counselor interviews? Never really had another round. Or, yeah, we did we did have another round and um, actually about to reach out for I think we have well we have a list of about seven applicants that have been kind of resubmitting, but there, I think there's two on there, one um, that we're going to call, we're going to start a fifth round, uh, probably contact them by the end of this week and get that going again. i got a question for the board. <coughs> I, I've read it somewhere, you know, whether or not we should continue using the format that we got right now for the principal and the superintendent's incidental report, or whether or not we should try something else or go back to what we had, because I get the feeling that some of the information in there, you, I can't find any correlation between what's in there and what the goal is you know so it's like they're putting things in there to put things in there because they, they they want to let the board know what's going on with the school but I don't see the connection between what they're saying sometimes and what <coughs> the goal is and I'm just wondering if maybe we shouldn't scratch duck this format and they need to go back to what we had which was nothing more than a simple letter you know uh, you know from the principal mm -hmm. on what they were doing in the schools and that um, as far as Adams in his report I don't know if how he feels about it yeah so um, come spring uh, I'll be talking with board chairs about revamping the whole process and that includes you know the work that we do during these two-hour sessions. Um, 
to get it more aligned. And I'm not sure if I spoke, I know I spoke about this at several board meetings, but I don't know if this was one of them. Um, I know in front of the OSU board we talked about this, but uh, moving more toward a policy governance model. So we create a, an annual work plan and the whole year is planned out so that you know, you know, this, this student presentation would have been on that plan. Um, if we're targeting those framework for continual growth goals, then, then we'd have a, a particular goal, you know, each month, and then we provide data to, to show you how we're targeting that. Um, so it'd be much more outcomes oriented and data driven, and there'd be less of, you know, well, let's throw this on on next week's agenda and oh let's add this. Right now it's, it's very unstructured and it's not really a policy governance model. But um, as I said at the OSU meeting, you know, this was low on my priority list. Um, I felt that there were new boards, new relationships to be forged, not just between me and the board, but between you and each other. So um, I figured this would be a good year two goal. Does that sound more like what you're does that sound more like what you're expecting to see, Kim? It would provide more information, better information, more accurate. You know, like I said, it seems like they're trying to fit things, you know, a square peg in a round hole. And, it, it, you know, I don't think, I understand the format and why they tried it, but I don't think it's working. And, it, you know, I think it's, I would rather see the principal have the free hand to, you know, tell us what's going on as opposed to trying to fit them into these blocks that may or may not fit. I mean, I mean that's something that could be changed up, you know, for the next meeting probably if you want to shift yeah. them. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's why I asked the board, you know. Well, have, have you noticed, you know, the kind of... What I do like about it is that... Um, you know, we do have these goals, and so it it is sort of holding everybody accountable to make sure that we're keeping track of these goals, you know, and to see. And I, I do see the connection, but, you know, in this particular one, I see there's, like, the first one, social-emotional learning is quite a bit in there, like the outdoor or the wellness activities and engaging communication with community. There's the community events and organizational systems or the MTSS stuff so I do see the connection and I I mean I think it's helpful to keep track of these bigger goals and make sure that we're you know it's an ongoing thing that we're, we're meeting but I, I mean I'm open to a new format for sure but I think this is helpful um, I mean I guess I kind of would want to ask the principals do you all feel like you're able, in using this format, that you're able to give us the kind of, like, picture of the schools on a monthly basis that you want, or do you feel like you're you're looking at the goals and then saying, okay, what things can I put in underneath them instead of being able to say, like, here's what is happening at our school this month. Like, is it restrictive? Do you find it helpful? Is it... Because that's um, kind of what I... I mean, well, I think in a couple of ways, it's, it's, it is kind of does remind us that to let the board know things that are happening right. that you might not be aware of be at the school. Right. So I think that it can serve that purpose. I think the most the restrictive part of it is it is kind of focused on since the last meeting often. So right. sometimes we only have a couple of weeks of school or something. So it is like, oh, okay, what's happening? Instead of a kind of a longer range piece, I think it, it can... Even though we do track things like the MTSS, mm -hmm. so you're seeing little bits every month, but I think that might not be as helpful for you just to see a snapshot, snapshot, snapshot of our MTSS piece. Um, so I can see where it would be limiting as well. So right. I, I think it could be useful for, for information, but I can understand where Kim's coming from too. Right. It is limiting in other ways. But we're not limited just to this. The board can also ask us for additional information, you know, with, with a heads up, hopefully, month to month in terms of you want to hear incidental report but also we'd like to hear about some right. certain aspects so I don't feel like you're limited to this right. I was glad to see in this one a nice um, balance of representation from the three elementary schools and I know just in the past few um, meetings we've had there were times where it was more representation of one school or another just based on what had happened maybe in that in that 
time frame. Um, and I, I like to see that, just to know what's going on at the three. And I don't know if it would be helpful to have, if we are restructuring it, uh, it being this, this principal's report, um, to have there be just a clear um, section for each elementary um, campus and say what each one is doing, or if we're trying to move away from that to focus on the, the commonalities. I, I'm not totally sure where we're, what we're emphasizing at this moment, so we might want to discuss that, but I do feel like it's important to have representation from the three buildings, and I think that was really showcased there. My two cents. Yeah, I've noticed how the last few, it's been a lot more integrated. It's been less campus-based and more integrated across, and I, I really like that. As far as the format goes, I mean, yeah, a longer-term, holistic view would be nice, but I don't have any issue with the way this is set up. I think it's good information. I personally like seeing the different activities because I don't have a kid in the elementary schools, so yeah. I'm not aware of all of these activities that you guys do, so I like seeing that. I mean, it sounds to me like we're sort of like, well, it's good, but if we want to change it, we're welcome to change it. So I, I don't really know where to where to go from here. I mean, maybe we could. Um, I, I don't know. Um, maybe when we're doing some visioning next, um, when's our next? This summer. Like this this summer, summer, like a visioning process next summer. It's not an we urgent matter, yeah. right? I mean, I feel like we're getting information from the schools, and we certainly have we have the ability to ask if we have questions. So I don't feel like this is urgent, I guess. But um, but that's well noted, and I think if we're already looking at it at the OSU level, then it's kind of natural that this might um, look at it as well. So. Are we comfortable? Are you, is that okay? Sure. Okay, so let's move on to the principal's incidental report then. Super. Superintendent, sorry. Yes, thank you. Yeah, so I'll um, segue off of something Sam mentioned, um, being a big fan of SEL. Um, we have an upcoming leadership team meeting this Thursday uh, at which we'll be watching um, two live presentations online um, from two organizations. One is Responsive Classroom, and the other is Developmental Designs, uh, which was formed by some folks from Responsive Classroom who went off. And, um, but these are programs that are already um, used by actually many teachers in our organization and others. And it's really all about uh, you know, we, we acknowledge that unless students are um, socially and emotionally healthy, then they can't learn academically. Um, and there's been a real revolution in that perspective. So, so the main thing we want to do, especially at the younger le levels, is establish community. Um, and this also ties into the type of learner agency we're trying to cultivate. Uh, it ties into personalized learning, but really commit creating many communities within the, within the classroom so students feel comfortable, they feel part of, of a group, um, and they learn social skills and, and uh, they reflect on their feelings, they learn coping mechanisms. Um, so the two programs, were, and, and this is uh, sort of the culmination of several discussions that we've had at, at the leadership level, uh, where we've all agreed that we want one, you know, one language, one toolkit to really make things consistent across the board, across all our schools, and it's really, it'd be probably pre-K through eight. And then from ninth grade on, you'd have the restorative practices that both Craftsbury and Hazen are instituting at their schools, and that's sort of the next level, where they, they do the restorative circles, and it's still the same emphasis on creating community. Uh, Hazen, in their teacher-student advisories, every morning they, they have a circle, and kids circle up and they share and um, reflect on things that are important. Um, so we'll be looking at these two platforms and choosing one uh, Thursday, hopefully. And then I've spoken with Amy Massey, the curriculum director, about scheduling time, you know, using in-service time. 
uh, using some time, optional time in the summer, but talking about maybe in, in two or three years catching up everyone, all the veteran teachers, so we're all on the same page. And then as we onboard new teachers into the SU, you know, there's an expectation that they take this training. So everyone will have, uh, you know, speak the same language, there'll be consistency from grades K through, through eight. So I just want to update you. As you go down that path, I encourage you to, and I'm sure you are considering that, but um, really considering ongoing professional development, yes. just, not just the initial training, because that, I find, is something that really phases out pretty quickly, and right. teachers get frustrated and burned out, and they need those boosters along the way. Yeah, They're no, great programs, but they need Yeah, constant. that's a great point. And, and part of that, um, actually, Heather illustrated this at last night's meeting. Um, if you go back beyond five years, the restorative classroom uh, program has a lot less of that SEL content because they're they're constantly shifting and updating their content as the you know as the brain research digs up new things so yeah that's a, an important point so we, there'd be an expectation in there for the refreshers so once you have your initial training maybe you know three five years down the line you get the refresher um, okay does anyone have any questions about the superintendent's report Um, I also realized that on our agenda, which I just caught, there's no OSSU board report out, which that meeting happened last night. So because somehow that's not getting on the agenda, I'm going to just report out on it right now. <laughs> and you can help me. Um, but we met last night, and uh, we talked about a lot of things, and... Um, we spent, we had, uh, I mean, we mainly talked about what happened at Hazen over the weekend, or not at Hazen, but what happened with the student over the weekend. Um, there was a lot of conversation about that. We had a teacher come and speak to the board, which was really powerful and great, and led to a lot of really good discussion just about um, social emotional well being of the students. And um, we talked about how that's going to change and the sort of conversation, you know, the responsive classroom and developmental design, that all of that was talked about in relationship to that. Um, and we also talked about the budget and we, I guess the big take home about the budget was that we did not approve a budget last night. So we are going to meet again next Tuesday after we've all had a chance, after all the small, boards have met and we're going to go back on Tuesday and either keep the budget the same or change it and then we're going to meet on Thursday. All the boards are going to meet on Thursday, at least a quorum of them, to approve their own budget with the new SU budget if that's what we decide to do. And that SU budget will be changed based on feedback from, from tonight. Right. Right. That we didn't feel that we could rubber stamp the OSSU budget without having seen this budget. And the same for Craftsbury and Hazen. Hazen, Hazen was the, it wasn't Craftsbury, it was Hazen was Hazen, the other right, big one. Hazen, um, although Craftsbury does meet before then. Yes, yeah, Stan's the only one that doesn't meet right, before and then. And Wolka does, but standard. What's the date then that we're saying we... Date and time and place. Next Thursday, 6 o'clock. The 16th? Yeah. yeah. And you can call in if you can't be there. We just have to have a... We just need a quorum, need a quorum for, that. for that one. Yeah. And if you're planning on calling in, it might be better if you just email me the number you want us to call you at. So we'll set up a we'll set up a conference call and we'll email everybody conference with bridge numbers and we'll tell you what time. We're setting everybody up at the same time. And we're just gonna go one right after the other. So I don't want you all just to sit there on hold for a half an hour, forty five minutes if you don't have to be there. So ready and we can text you just before we're ready to do your school district and then you can get on the bridge or whatever we need to do however you guys want to handle that or email uh, but we do have a conference bridge so we can set up the conference bridge so people can call in uh, but I just I would hate for everybody just to if you're, everybody, a lot of people are going to call in just to call in and have everybody sit there for half the people sit there for an hour before your school district gets so it's sometime between the six and eight window 
Is that right? Or I mean, it'll, six it'll probably be earlier than eight. Yeah. Six to seven is what it's scheduled for, right. but it just depends on how long those. I'm hopeful those conversations will be pretty short. I think this week. And then it's at central office at on the sixteenth. Yes. yes. Yeah. So we need at least five of you to commit to this. I can be there. I'll be there. I would say the only other piece of the meeting from last night was in our discussion in response to the, the teacher who spoke up was um, some discussion about um, that in order to have sort of more holistic approach to, um, to s student concerns that teachers would just need more, <laughs> more time in their schedule and that that's a, a matter for some probably for negotiation, that it would have to, if there were to be sort of a reconfiguring of time for teachers to have more of that in their day, that that wasn't something the board could could yes. change, but that it would, it was more of a sort of scheduling Should we talk about discussion. the importance of an every day an adult connecting individually with a student, with every student, um, and that had, you know, that taking time. The TA structure? Yeah, there's a TA structure in place, and eventually um, that'll be modified. And that's the point of that TA is mm -hmm. to connect, yeah. you know, students. And there are two adults in that TA, um, so that serves part of that purpose. I mean, kids are together, but every student should have a voice mm -hmm. in that circle and be able to connect. So, yeah, that's they're they're already designing that. Um, and then the question is, well, how is that? What does that look like at other schools? How is that? And in your TA, you don't necessarily see, I mean, you see that group of students, but you don't see the students in your, in all your classes. So there's students in your classes that you might want to take one-on-one -on -one time with, um, but, but often don't get to, right? And so it was about sort of finding other ways to make some of that time in the day for teachers and students to check in one-on-one. Yeah, maybe a flex time. And we didn't really come. We didn't really begin to sort of go down the road of imagining how it would look, but it was discussion about just um, how do you make sure the students are are getting that check in with adults. Yeah, because her her big point was sort of that we do a good job of reaching the students that are loud yeah. and need the help, but we don't do a very, she didn't feel, and she was speaking for herself, but she didn't feel like we were doing a good job reaching the students who came in and were polite and did the right thing and did their work and then went home. Yeah. That we don't have anything and that everybody needs that, that connection with somebody. It's not just the kids who are are having trouble, you know, like that are obviously having trouble, I guess was more of what she was saying. So it was a very good meeting and um, I think there was a lot of good discussion. So. Um, does anyone have any questions about the meeting? Okay. Um, so we are to go into executive session now for... Personnel. For personnel? Okay. So can someone make a motion to go into executive session for personnel? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Oh. Oh. Okay, we are going to come back and take out of executive session at 820, And there's no action taken. Um, although we are going to create a subcommittee. Um, and I guess I should ask who wants to be on the subcommittee to look at different. Kim would like to be on the subcommittee, or you have a good name for it? No. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll go on the committee. Okay. Yeah, I need to. I feel like I want to be. And I think we. I think that I need to be on there too because. There's nobody else from Hardwick. So. Well, so we do have. So I guess we're not going to have a subcommittee. We're just going to meet again. Special meetings. Well, well, special we can, meeting. We can do like some of the boards used to do several years ago. They had two meetings a month. Okay. One where they. That sounds great. That sounds, <laughs> that sounds fantastic. Like, they, they did this for years. <laughs> two meetings a month. One took care of most of the 
mandatory stuff. And they have Why are you looking at me when you say that? <laughs> well, the mandatory because you're the mandatory budget, stuff. Budget, finances, you know, things like okay. that, yeah. you know. And then the other one can be to address the deeper discussions, you know. Mm -hmm. I've, I've been on boards or going to board meetings for almost 15 years, and if there's one thing true, the boards never get the opportunity to talk about the deep subjects because they're always putting out a fire somewhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, every okay. month it's something new. You know, it's it's this that, and you you know, you it's can't get right. back to the big picture. You know, what are we trying to do for our students? Educate them, shape them, good citizenship. Blah 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 blah. blah. So you know. So then. Do we want to schedule a meeting for the specific purpose of talking about Our campus utilization? Campus utilization. We're already meeting on the. We are already 16th? meeting twi next week. Twice so next we week, right? Or no, it's only well, supposed to be a right. right. Once next it should be, be quick. An hour. So could we tack on to that? Since just we'll keep all be together? meeting. Just keep going. <laughs> on the sixteenth. Yeah. yeah. I'm just, it just seems like, like since we've already made that, yeah. like that set aside that evening, mean. right? Yeah. So Instead of making it a we'll say yeah. like... We could set a small conference room up. That would be great. Okay. Just switch over and go in there. That would be so good, because if everyone's already made the effort. So what are we going to say, like 7 o'clock? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What day are we talking about? Thursday. That's Thursday the 16th. Next Thursday, when we're at Central Office. Okay. Sounds good for... I had another meeting, but that's all right. <laughs> well, I think so. We're gonna have to meeting? amend their special meeting agenda. Yeah. To how long are you guys wanting to go? Uh, well, uh, look how long, how long it took us session? tonight. How that's long are we going to session? About an hour. An hour. An hour. So I mean, it was more than an hour. It was more than an hour. So if we do like an hour and a half. <laughs> Oh, I know. Was it 40? Yeah. Oh my god. 40? We're so sorry. Um, yeah. So sorry. Um, I mean, is it going to take us an hour to do the budget approval part? We can try to put you guys up to the top and get you guys done first. So if we say 6.30 to 8 is for our special meeting for this section, the separate section, and we just do a half an hour on the budget, do we feel like that's realistic? I'll, ju I'll just do 6 to 8. I'll amend it from 6 to 7 to 6 to 8. And I'll add this piece to the budget. To okay. The agenda. That sounds good. Okay, great. Thank you. And then we'll just move you guys into the small conference room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Perfect. Turn the heat off and open the windows up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is that meeting or is that open? It is going to be an executive, an executive session, 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 session meeting. actually. Yeah, it will be yeah. an executive session. The budget piece will be an open session. Yes. Then when they go into the other meeting, it'll be an exec executive session. Well, I thought. But that's the special meeting of the group that's going to talk about other options, right? Yeah, it is, but I think that... I mean, I think if we are talking about stuff we just talked about in the executive personal. session, then we would need to be able to be an executive session. Yeah. So... Yeah, I agree. Okay. Um, Anything else? Anything else? So... We are now moving on to the consent agenda. Happy days. <laughs> so, on the consent agenda, there is no treasurer's report because you got it last month, and and Alberta, I think, went on vacation this month, so I haven't seen the new one. So, you have uh, the financial narrative, um, which, if you looked at the financial narrative, you'll notice the front page is a little different now. Just yeah. that's under construction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like that. So there's <laughs> a bunch of new stuff on there. I've got a couple questions about this. One of uh, the revenue versus uh, expenditure. Yep. Is, is that saying that one of the towns haven't? We get the we get the revenues in pieces. So like Harvick tech, uh, collects their taxes later, 
so they don't pay until the taxes are collected. They have a different tax collection date. Okay, so Hardwick, like Woodbury, I think, yeah. is they're all done. They're all done. So Hardwick's Hard isn't until the spring. So Hard is the reason why we're at 37 is because of Hardwick? Yeah, so okay. their tax collection date is much later. I um, think it's March, is that correct, Catherine? Tax oh. collections in Hardwick? For property taxes? Yeah. No, May. May, May, that's right. May 10th. May 10th. So. And then the other thing I noticed about your tables, uh, your mills, and you can probably explain it to me mm -hmm. because my sheet was cut off, but uh, up here in the blue, you're talking 241, but when you come down here to the purple, it's 327. It's 327 here, you know. The, oh, I the same numbers keep bouncing around, you know. The 327. We're, ta we're talking Hardwick. 327 two, is two, total students. 241. I clicked on the wrong cell when I liked it. Okay. I'm sorry? The 327 is total students for OSUESD. So when I linked well, it. Well, how come it's in there Hardwick then? Because if you look to the next column over, it's Hardwick at 241. I linked to the wrong column. Give me your hand. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> All right. I was trying to fig trying to figure it out when I was so the total working. should be three twenty seven. What it should add up to. Okay. So, see this big sign says under construction. That should apply for this whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, what this Paul's is supposed to come up to is starting to get some more metrics on here for you all to look at. Um, to start understanding, you know, how much are we spending on facilities? How much are we, how many kids are actually receiving meals at our schools and what is it costing us per meal? So if you look over here mm -hmm. in total, you know, if I annualized the total meals right now, and that's what I did to get to that 441 is I annualized what current meals we have, got to an average meal per month and then multiply that times 9.5 months because that's how many months you serve meals. Um, our $364,000, $345,000 budget comes up to $4.41 per meal. Um, what we've actually spent so far is we're only at $3.61 per meal. Part of my question when I was looking at this document was I thought that we as a board had decided that we were going to go <coughs> towards the Lakeview model of free meals for, we the, for the FY21 uh, not for FY20 I don't believe that was the understanding it of wasn't the board. budgeted it was not budgeted for FY20 well that's why I'm asking <coughs> it's budgeted that, that's for one FY21. of my questions because yeah. I could have that was in our last budget because we talked about like that we talked about it but we pulled it out who that's pulled it out I don't it was yeah. pulled out last year. We did not budget for universal meals across all the schools no, no, last we year. Budgeted for that for the, we budgeted for that. Because if you remember, your each, last year's budget was just your three individual just board budgets together. pushed together. Oh, right, yeah, well, right. That, that, but that was for, for next, this year. Right, right. Well, the year we're in. Right. FY20. Next but year. The, the we'll budget that right. we're talking about right now is next year's budget and that I, next year's budget has universal meals budgeted oh, in there that's, okay that's it, what we're talking that about. was my question yes and where was because wasn't there going to be an increase in yeah about expense? 40 42 or, 42 or forty three thousand dollars something like that I, it's going to cost us it's not i lot. didn't see it in the budget you know, that you know when i was looking at the numbers and that's it's on the revenue side so it's actually a decrease in revenue well, I saw that yeah. because we were losing what <laughs> parents were paying. Yeah. The but expenses, I, thought, I thought there was also... No, the expenses stay the expenses. We still serve, we, we'd expect to serve about 10% more kids. So when I talked to Val, she said it's not going to materially increase their food budget because they do plan for a surplus in their budget. So they plan to serve more kids than they actually think they're going to serve when they budget. Yeah, but Highwood's got a robust breakfast program mm -hmm. if I understand we're going to try to do that with, with the other campuses too is try to get a more robust 
breakfast program? Well, Wood, Lakeview has a pretty robust breakfast program. Well, I guess Woodbridge is a little Woodbury little only serves 19% of their kids' breakfast. Yeah. Okay, where's, where's my principal at? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> so that is one of the things that's on our list next year, and Val and I have been talking about that. And I think that she's she's got some ideas for Craig that she has to find some time over probably over the summer to plan with Craig is how do we get you know, maybe breakfast in the classroom and breakfast on the carts and some other ideas that she has seen success for in Hardwick that have really increased their participation. But is that going to affect our budget? No. No. Okay. Because she's already planned for this. Right. Okay. That's planning that, that for one yeah. of my questions when I was going through this. Okay. So the big, for next year, the big thing you're going to see is a decrease in revenue. Because you're not going to be yeah, receiving the cash I, coming in. I saw that. I did see that. Yeah. And then the other thing is, I don't know if, this document, some of you may see, if you try to open <laughs> it and drive, sometimes it comes up that if you are not careful and don't open it as a PDF, and you try opening as a doc, you get this really weird looking thing that comes up. I did. It was fun. It really looks quite unusual. Um, this is a financial management questionnaire that needs to be filled out every year. This is really redundant compared to what the auditors do now, but the auditors still look for this piece of paper every year. Uh, basically what it does is makes looks at um, the separation of duties to make sure that we don't have the same person opening the mail, writing the checks, putting vendors in the system. Um, doing all the stuff that we have proper internal controls set up. Um, you know, one of the things on here is, have you borrowed money from the school district? Well, no, I don't borrow money from the school district. That's really not a good thing to do. Um, is the same individual opening the mail and depositing checks? No, we have separate people that do those, those functions. Uh, so it's just a checklist of things, the best practices to go down through. It was really geared back when school districts and towns were basically the same entity. Um, the, the document really could use some updating, but it's not. Uh, it hasn't been updated. Um, these are provided by the state. So we fill them out, we sign them every year, uh, and then we ask the, the board chairs of each board to sign them, and we put them in the folder and the auditors look to make sure that we have completed these and presented them to the boards every year uh, at the end of the year. I don't remember seeing that document three years ago. It's been out for. Well, of course, you weren't you were the CFO, no. but um, I it was when I was on the board. I remember this document ten years ago. I, uh, I don't remember seeing any of that. Exactly. No, Woodbury has not done that, and I know when I was the chair of the OSSU, you know, it wasn't done either. So. That being said, I noticed that the one thing that is not on there that I thought was kind of strange is making sure that funds expenditures are posted against the correct fund. Like I said, this is an old document. Well, that brings me to my thing when I was looking at the APs that uh, KD Associates was money taken initially out of the general fund and not out of the Greensboro fund. Mm -hmm. Has that money been put it's back? Put back. I didn't see anything in the, tr well the, you said there wasn't any treasurer. I didn't see no. anything that sh says that it was done. I've asked Sonia to put it back because I saw that as well. When the checks go out, I don't see the checks until after they're cut and after you guys review them. Um, it goes through a process and then I get the, the AP vouchers after you guys have all reviewed them. And okay, so off. The, what did they do? Void that voucher? Or? No, they'll just do a journal entry and move the expense. Okay. We wouldn't void that voucher because the check's already gone out to the vendor. Okay. And there's no sense in it. It all comes from the same checking account. It's just a different fund within that checking account. So this is the second year in a row that that's happened. 
Yeah. The volume of those, that's why we have double checks and triple checks on that to make sure that those get corrected. There are going to be those transactions that do slip through, and that's when we have the double and triple checks to make sure they hit the right one. And that's when the auditors check those too, because they check all the transactions that are, they pull all the minutes at the end of the year, and they read through the minutes to see what the boards have put to those special purpose funds. And then they go back and they test all those special purpose funds to make sure those transactions are cleared. So the auditors check that as well. And if we've missed anything at that point, they'll make this journal entry it out, fix it. Well, I'm pretty sure they probably didn't catch the two that I did. The one from Woodbury last year, and this one was uh, KD Associates. This, this Which year. one from Woodbury last year? Woodbury's last year. They, um, there was an expenditure on the general fund that should have came from the building and grounds account. That's because we cleared it up before the auditors. Audited financials. Probably. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we are going to. Um, did we go over everything we need to go over for this? Yep. Yeah, we just need a motion to so approve I the need consent to, agenda. Yeah. Anybody want to make a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Okay, all those in favor of approving the consent agenda signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Don't sign on the date. Don't sign on the date. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, Seems like joke. the obvious slide. <laughs> Just a quick question. As you guys are looking at the, the new financial um, packet, if you can think of anything else that you want to see on that, just shoot me an email and say, hey, what about this data point? And we'll look at it and see if that's it makes sense to put on there. Um, and, you know, we'll Can just... I have a copy of that? My screen makes it oh. hard to see. Thank you. It's just easier. Thank you. I don't know why I'm not getting a good screen view. And then one other quick change is you guys don't have an audit for a transactional item to approve because you haven't had a full fiscal year yet. That's very true. I was wondering about that when I saw it. Mm -hmm. well, I, just think I'm gonna go I told Taylor to put them on all of them. And mm -hmm. I didn't think to tell her not to put it on OSU ESD. All right, so we're down to the budget. Budget. We're still awake. So. Here we are. We'll start on page two, which basically shows you what's changed since the last version. Um, With the blue line? Yep. So there was a decrease at the SU level for a couple different reasons. One being that uh, applied uh, prior year surpluses that the SU had um, to the SU budget. Uh, then we had some uh, other deductions around health insurance. Um, I'm just trying to think what else it was. I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, pull it up here. Is that the surpluses from each of the school, from all the schools? No. No, oh, that's, that's the SU, SU level. Gotcha. Right. That's what so yeah. health insurance. Um, yeah, I guess there's health insurance and then the surplus health insur update for health insurance and then surplus that I applied to the SU budget. Um, that saw a decrease. Oh, and then I recalculated based on the new equalized people numbers, which decreased your percentage of the SU budget um, because of your decrease in equalized pupils. So that uh, decrease in total was 197623 um, Then I did um, an adjustment to health insurance. Same thing that I did at the SU level, I did at OSU ESD. That was 22.5. And then we had a teacher retirement um, 
that we're not filling. Um, and that teacher salary and benefits was 96405. Uh, so total was 316552. Um, and then if you look on page three, um, and then you look down at um, on FY21 down at the bottom where it says prior year surplus applied. Mm -hmm. I have applied all of the prior year surpluses that we've had um, now to this. Um, so if you remember correctly, last time we had um, a little bit, we, I had set aside 227,000 that we did not have applied yet. I have applied it all. Um, the way the statute works for prior year surpluses is like, for example, when we have a prior year surplus in FY19, the immediate or the natural um, operation of that by, per statute is that automatically goes to offset taxes in the next budget cycle. That's the state statute. That's the natural progression. The only reason way it does not happen that way is if the board and the voters elect to pull money out of saying, I do not want to offset taxes. And they pull money out of that and they set it aside for a special purpose fund, such as a building maintenance reserve fund or something like that. Um, so what we've done here is to just allow all that money to flow through uh, to offset taxes. But we haven't ask the voters if they want to do that yet because we haven't had our annual meeting which brings me back to this whole question you're using one-time money on a reoccurring problem right which because of the uh the floor being gone at the, uh, which is part of the discussion we just had in the technical session which is why we are we're looking at the options talk about in the executive session. And I, you know, I've been around long enough to know that anytime you use one-time money to, to fix back your budget, you pay for it the following year. Every time. Because you still got the problem and now you don't have the money. Right, but that's why we're having a special meeting to talk about options. Can we do options for FY22? Like we under we fully understand that. I think everybody understands that using one-time money just kicks the can down the road. But I think we also are realizing that we have opportunities to make changes, and that's why we're trying to meet to talk about ways to deal with this better ne next year. Right? Just make sure said, I thought. Time that we had to make decisions at this meeting that oh, yeah. might affect the OSSU budget. We need to talk about whether or not we are comfortable with the newest version of the budget. And if we are, we can say that you will allow for the SU board members at this table to say yes, the OSUED board as a whole supports the SU budget to vote yes for it, to accept it, or that you want to give them direction to reduce it because we want our budget to be, to have a smaller amount. Like, you know what I mean? That's what, that's what we're trying to decipher now. We, at the, our board meeting last night, at the SU board meeting mm -hmm. last night, mm -hmm. we said, we're not gonna we're not gonna say yes yet because we wanted to talk to this board. We wanted to see this new version of the budget, and so we need to talk about this version of the budget and whether or not we're comfortable having it go forward this way to voters. And that's what that executive session was: is talk is recognizing that we are using that one-time money and that we do have a longer-term systemic issue that we need to figure out. And that's what that your group. Is going to be working. That's what our subcommittee. That's not really a yeah. subcommittee. <laughs> yeah, but whatever you come up in that subcommittee wouldn't see the same savings as the scenario we talked about. And that's, that's again why it's a special service. Yeah. Right. And I'm a firm believer in having a building and ground fund 
So Which they, both Lakeview yes. and Hardwick do have currently. Lakeview has about $90,000, Hardwick has $40,000 in theirs. And that, is that, that was from the old one. Going forward, we're going to have one, right? No. Well, right now, they're, they're still separate. They're separate because those are funds that were... Brought in. Right. But going forward, and that's what we're talking about right here, going forward, we need to develop and best financial practices is to have a certain amount of reserve money for buildings and grounds. Which right now you do have, collectively, you have about $130,000 between the two buildings. Those are for those specific buildings. Right. But it's not going to address anything that might come up in the future. Why wouldn't it? Well, that's, what that's, what there for. that's what it's there for. That's what it's there for. Well, I could think of a couple of reasons. I would really like to hear an example. I'm, I'm lost at this point. Okay. It's the contract with Woodbury doesn't cover everything. So there, you know, Woodbury doesn't have the funding. Right, but and Woodbury they're gonna, doesn't. They're not going to have anything, so if anything breaks at Woodbury. Then the, right now the town is. On. No, no. Mm -mm. That's not so. Yeah. Trust me, it's not. Town okay. is not <laughs> the town is not maintaining that building. That's not part of the, the agreement, I don't believe. The, the town, we cannot spend education dollars to maintain that building. And I've told them and told them and told them that. But there are some things oh, wait, that are related to education. I wonder why, right? Yeah. I haven't done this from you know, okay. Like right. the uh, milk cooler. Yeah, the milk cooler is part of the of the equipment that's in the building. That's not that's not maintaining a building. It's right, for educational but, you know, purposes. If it's a cooler you know so, crack out. So can I say something really quickly? Is what you're asking is that you would like to see some of the money that is currently in the surplus go toward some kind of OSUED fund? A building that and would be a building and grounds fund for any building Yes. In the OSUED. Yes. So, how much would make you feel comfortable? But this, let's hold up here a second. Even if we had a building maintenance fund, if we had a milk cooler go out, I couldn't use yeah. it to buy a milk cooler. I, I just feel, I feel like what's happening, with all due respect, I feel like what's happening right now is that we're getting to the weeds talking about a milk cooler, and it's okay. ten of nine. Okay. So, so I just I I I'm I'm trying to be respectful about the fact that that I hear what you're saying that like this is a, a lot of surplus money and we have three buildings that we need to maintain and only two of them have a building and maintenance fund. Well, the two buildings that that we can use facilities maintenance funds on, we we have money. Right, right, right. right, right but Woodbury put like twenty five thousand dollars toward their roof last year, which yeah. wasn't illegal as far as I understood it. They didn't put any money towards their roof. They put money towards their rent. Town. And the, the town, town paid for their roof. Okay. Okay. okay, that's right. I don't know. I'm sorry, it's getting late and I'm tired. <laughs> so, um, so can we just, I just want to get through a couple other things and then we okay. can go back to this conversation. So, as you notice, if you go down through on your tax calculation sheet, I just want to get through this. Um, all of your CLAs went down as well, which also increases your tax rate. Your tax calculation. And we don't have page. control over that. That's you have no the, control over that. The, the front state page, CLA. Catherine. Yeah. Sorry. Thanks. So this is all your grand list versus, which is what houses sold for versus what the market rate was. Um, so all of those went down, which increases your tax rate. You can see the, the tax in rate, the tax impact table that I printed for you. That's on the right hand side. On the right hand side. Oh, yeah. I yeah. broke all of these five drivers out for you in total. Um, so you could see how they lined up. Um, but then when you come down to the bottom, you can see that Greensboro's tax rate with this proposal would be 70 cents, which is two and a half cents lower than it was last year. 
Hardwick's would be 92 cents, which is basically 4.9 cents higher than it was. Um, standard would be 102.7 or 102.8, which is basically a penny higher than it was. Woodbury would be 94.2, which is basically a fraction of a penny higher than it was. Um, so from a tax rate perspective, um, you're pretty good given the swing in the CLA and the impact that you had with equalized pupils. Um, you had a very significant impact with the equalized pupil floor. That really hurt. Um, so I think that to come back to that conversation too is that was not just a one year impact, that was a compounded year because it wasn't just a one time they went back and retroactively took the floor out. So you were actually doing a little bit of a catch up there as well. Over those two years. Yeah, but it's it's going to happen again. It's going to happen, but I don't I don't think it's going to be as significant. Well, it's significant because we already have dealt you've, with. You've taken the big hit this year. Um, looking at next year versus there is going to be a decrease, but I don't. It all depends on where our, our enrollment is next fall, um, as to impact how where that's going to be. And I'm not in a position to guess as to where that's going to be. I don't have a crystal ball, um, but I don't foresee it being. Um, 30 student drop again next year. So, I mean, uh, when you look at your ed spending overall, you're down $300,000. I, I understand that. I also understand, you know, how close we're to a threshold. When I had one year that I was even closer than that. I had a year where on the Crassbury when I was on the Crassbury board we were eight dollars. Yeah. <laughs> eight dollars yeah. under the threshold. Mm. So John, I had a question about um, my stickers on there. Really. Thanks, Oliver did that for me. It was a way to make it more fun. <laughs> um, w with on the last page with three thirty one and three thirty two, the new SU assessment line and purchase services from the SU. It says it does not include the new SU budget off onto the note side and I was just wondering if that was just left there or if it doesn't and what Oh that yes, means. yeah, it was just left there. I'm okay, sorry. Okay, thanks. Great. Yeah. That was that's good. Um just the note was left there. Just the yeah, note the note was, was left there. there. Those were right. notes for me to go back and make sure that I I put notes in there for myself sometimes. To make sure I go back and double check things and I didn't take that one out. Just a quick question about the lease tech and the lease tech blah, tech lease. lease ending. Um, so that was uh, down thirty three whatever percent. Yep. Does that that come out somewhere else, or we have to renew a different? No, or is we that had a very we had a three year lease that was a really large lease. Yeah. That ended. Okay. And it, we're not. And we're done. That we're not later. doing it again. Not okay. doing Got it. Like that again. There's a saving. Yeah. Excellent. The uh, lines 331 and 332 says new uh, uh, SU assessment. Mine, the note in your comment does not include the new. That's what Catherine just asked me. That was the note that I put there originally oh, okay. to go back to it, and I just left it in there. That's my bad. So this current proposal puts you about $48,500 under the threshold. And the only sort of the sacrifice we made was that um, compared to the last budget was in not having the, that surplus. Well, we didn't know about that surplus at the time, what it would be, but not in not putting that surplus we're just utilizing that surplus in the way, the way the state envisions it. The, we're just utilizing it in that way. We're not. We wouldn't we're not going to carve anyway, it out. We just didn't know yeah. the amount. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. We would have. Uh, we're not going to carve any of it out for anything right. different. Right. Got it. We're just going to let it flow through the way the state intended for it to. And the way that it will impact us next year is that this budget will be 
presumably we won't have a similarly massive surplus. And so even if we kept things the same, our budget would be under by a lot. So the question is, the immediate question is, do we like this budget? Are we comfortable with presenting this budget to voters? And if we are not, how do we want to proceed? Um, and do we have any, like, you know, the, the main changes that we saw at the SU level when we looked at their budget last night was that they similarly had a surplus that they applied to their budget, which reduced it. Um, which is helpful, obviously, um, but for next week, we need to, I need, like Rose and I need direction from everyone here if they want for us to talk at all about the SU budget or if they want to, just if we're comfortable with this and presenting this. And When we formed this OSSU, there were certain contracts given for one year. What are we going to do about those contracts that were only for one year? That's a good question. Yeah. Like in this new union, that some were one year and some were... I'm talking about this board. Oh, oh you mean the, the, this board the positions on this board? some contracts for one year. Are you talking about the principal contracts? The principal contracts, right? Yes. Is that, yeah. So the question Does is... Does this budget include all three positions, even though we knew at the beginning that we'd probably have to cut one position? That's why they were only offered one year? I don't know as anybody assumed that you were cutting any. They're all up for renewal. They're all for renewal now. That was the purpose for a one-year contract. Was to get us over the hump of the first year with, with adequate uh, administrative staff in, there. In addition to that, um, you know, so that's, there's what, $70,000 or something? Depends on the principal. Yeah. Plus or minus. So when you talk about coming up with a new configuration, yeah. for the SU past that second year, that's impossible without having leadership to every building. Mm, it is possible because we've done it in the past. As a matter of fact, part of the discussion um, was um, with Barry and Lakeville sharing the principal. So it is possible, and yes. it is something that is on the minds of certain people in the community. You recall the meeting that we had back in June? Yeah. So I think if we think back to that and what community members came out strongly saying, for one year. That year is coming up. Does this affect our budget in any way? Yeah. It would uh, decrease it by 70000 plus. This feels really late to start talking about this. Sorry. I don't think it's late. Well, we're needing to approve a budget by at the latest Thursday of next week. Actually, you don't need a budget until May. So this budget is coming in under the threshold. Barely. Barely. And but it you, is. You, you're making so let an me finish. Kim, can I finish, please? Yeah. And then can talk. Um, so under the threshold, with um, if I'm interpreting it, some pretty reasonable tax rates, right? Yeah. So I feel. I feel comfortable pushing this forward without a drastic cut that, you know, continues to keep our programs intact and 
intact, and then we can, Especially as we have our special meeting, plan. when we're thinking about the future and reconfiguring potentially, those are all pieces to consider, certainly. But at this point now, you know, with this transition period um, and this budget looking like it is, that's my two cents. I would second that. I think it's, it is worth um, a true consideration as we go forward and look at the, the whole super, the whole, what's this thing called? This whole this elementary this district, district. Um, and that administration can, can take all kinds of different forms and how that might look across, the, across that. Um, but for this budget, it looks like if, if we're under the threshold and, and we want to keep sustain things among the three campuses. Not just sustain, build, right? Just build and sustain, yeah, yeah. yeah. Build, for sure. So do we have to vote to move this forward? Yes. Is, uh, for the folks that have typically participated in the hardwood Carter community vote, mm -hmm. is this tax rate looking like one? I mean, I know there's been a lot This of is going to be on the high end for them, I think, but um, Hazen's looking at, uh, from the harder perspective as a slight decrease, so I think that's going to help. Um, can, can you compare for us? I just didn't see it here the um, where the ed spending per equalized pupil, how that compares to last year. Or is that what this that's is what saying? That's, that's what that's saying. 18, oh, I keep thinking this is 19. Got it, got it. Okay. Yep. yep. You didn't exist in 19, so I can't compare that. Right. It's zero. Gotcha. I knew that. Um, yeah. So it's only up by 500. Yeah, just under 500 dollars. So, so I move that we direct yeah. um, these two ladies, Catherine and Rose, to uh, go forward to the OSSC board with our approval. I second. All those in favor of approving the SU budget. Is there discussions? Or we what? can discuss, I'm sorry. I just want to really yep. clarify, mm -hmm. as like a Hardwick resident, knowing, you know, like this feels good to, like this feels reasonable to propose. I think this feels reasonable to propose. I think that there may be some, there may be some pushback, but I feel like we're trying to be as responsible as we can with and, and working within what we have right now, which is declining enrollment and a two year you know window of what we have to do and keep things where they are. Um, I mean considering you know what the we other the other argument to this is if Hardwick CLA would have come in flat their tax rate would have been zero percent increase, zero cent increase. Right. This four point nine percent, four nine cent point nine cent increase is all could the be CLA. all CLA. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, hard. I mean, it's it, and it's. It's hard to argue with it, that. It's hard to argue. Yeah. Like I mean, it's this is. I would. I would be. I feel comfortable putting this forth to the voters and saying like, hey, look, this is. We worked really hard on this. We've, you know, tried to keep everything like good education and good opportunities for the kids and I think that everyone has got that in their best interest and um, but I, I mean I'm comfortable with it I do I I'm gonna agree with John that it is a little bit high historically but I'm willing to put it forward because I think that you know we're, we're trying for things that we have added to the budget I think are important and um, yeah so I'm comfortable is there any more discussion on the motion on the floor? Okay. So all those in favor of saying that the SU budget is com we're comfortable with the SU budget, not this one, but the SU budget, signify by saying aye. Wait, yes, you what you said. Yeah. Are we saying SU budget or this OSUED budget? Oh, I thought we were talking about this OSUED right. budget. Well, <laughs> if you're sorry, comfortable, not well, enough. I'm sorry, but if you're comfortable with this budget, by default, you're by default forward. we are. Yeah. But I'm trying to remember what she said. I said, said what she said. I think I think one said one and one said the other. Well, I thought we were approving this one, which is different. Which means that if if people saw if there were any proposals for 
for cuts at the. We're giving you guys directives that we're good. So how do? We, so I thought she was giving us directives to not go back to the SU board and say we want to change yeah. anything with the yep. SU budget. That's what Sam so said. So that's okay. what Luke seconded. Okay. So I'm saying that the, but that the motion on the floor right now that we're going to say yes or no to is if you are directing Rose and I to go back to the SU board on Tuesday and say we're comfortable with the OSSU budget. What? The OSSU budget use their surplus yes for the thing do you have money in your budget for those uh proposed buses yes yes okay all right yeah that included the those additions were like the pro the proposed buses the nursing program the facilities Stipends, stipends, stipends food service the stipend. food service stipend. Those were the additions for next. Right? Well, there was a uh, school-based psychologist. And a school-based psych. There was a short list of yeah. the only yeah. additions, right? For so we had cut that. We yeah. only cut two hundred fifty thousand dollars. So point of order, we do have a motion. I know. I'm trying to have. say. Okay. So all those in favor of approving the SU budget. Signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, abstain or nose. What is the word? Opposed. 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 Thank you. This is what happens after not. Abstentions. Motion carries. You abstained. Okay. Kim has abstained. Um, is there a motion to approve this OSUED budget? Well, and I think we have to do that on Thursday. We have to do yeah. that on Thursday. Okay, never mind. Yeah. So, okay. are you guys good with this? No, we're good here then. And then we'll get the language strapped up so the article's got to match the dollar amount exactly. So we'll have the article and this ready for Thursday. You'll come in and it'll be two votes to approve the article and approve the budget. You'll sign the article for the warning, uh, or you sign your warning for the annual meeting. Because you guys picked that funky date <laughs> two weeks before town um, meeting, okay. um, so we've got to get your reports printed and out the door here the pretty date? quick. January yeah. or February eighteenth. February eighteenth. Mm -hmm. Yep. Because it had to be it's our annual meeting. It's your annual yeah. meeting, and then we will have to schedule a nine thirty. Nine thirty at night. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I think, think it's after. I hope it's at nine thirty at night. That's all those fun. others were in the morning. Mm -hmm. I didn't change the time. No, I think they're in the evening. Um, and then we'll have to schedule a budget informational meeting between then and town meeting because you don't, because of the timeline that was selected, it's too far out from town meeting to have your budget informational meeting because that has to be within 10 days of town meeting <laughs> so that to share the budget with the voters. I thought we had so. the. March second schedule for OSSU OS, or the OSUD. I've got the second listed, second of March listed for that. The annual the meeting now. Annual meeting is the 18th. So when's this informational meeting? We've yeah, got to schedule it. I have the second on my calendar. It says OSUD school board budget info meeting. Well, that's oh, that that has to the info, the budget info yeah. meeting. Maybe that that's right uh, scheduled before. already. Then I don't. That I happens right before town meeting. Yeah, which is so maybe that's already that scheduled for a second. Right. Yeah, you might have. I have it too. Public budget meeting. Yes, okay. with budget second. information. 7 p.m. on the second. Yes. Yeah, yeah. so that's can probably I, already scheduled. Can I ask? 7 p.m. on the second. For future agenda items, so we can just finish up this meeting real quick. Does anyone have future agenda items for the February, not mm -hmm. for the next one? We've got like <laughs> typical report out, all the normal things. Do we want to have another executive session built in there for yes. Yes. discussion of? Um, but let's keep that one meeting right to an hour. I, the oh. executive session? Yeah. Time sure. yourself. Okay. Yeah. Two hours before we need to right. okay. um, I just have a quick question about, the, like, if we have this subcommittee to sort of look at, um, I can't talk too much about it, but to look at the structure of, mm -hmm. of the elementary uh, district. At what point can we not be in executive session and get command?
community input or is that just like we have to come up with it? I think we have no. to wait until we, we have, have this work. next meeting on February and then we can start <coughs> talking about like where we are with it. Like okay. let's let's do that yeah. because I feel like we need a little bit of direction yeah. from Internally, Adam and yeah, we need to we need to work out our things and then yeah. we can start talking about presenting things to the community and things like that. Yeah. Where is February meeting going to be? I just uh, didn't want to call the executive. February meeting. It's okay. It's nine fifteen. It's hard work, isn't it? That's. I, I was thinking hard work. Yeah. I think it's hard work. Yeah, because we were at Woodbury last. Yeah. Week, yeah. Last. Week. Um, All right. I'll be home on February eighteenth. February fifth is oh, okay. our next meeting. So, what hard else work? do we need to talk about? Hard work. Yeah. This is the location. Yes. Um, <laughs> February 5th. Sorry. It's okay. Okay, nothing but the excitement session. Do we want to talk about anything else at our next meeting on, on February 16th? 5th? Nope. Oh, yeah. February 5th. Maybe. Can we, maybe we can I, talk yeah. about consolidation of the purchases? Something. Sure. Put it on there. Can we get an update on the um, diversity inclusion grant work? But I forget the name of it. Oh, the equity grant? <laughs> equity grant. Equity grant update. Anything else? Sound good? Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. All right, let's adjourn my consensus. Thank you. my favorite person for my <laughs>